Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at one of probably the most asked questions that I get from brand new animators, and that is, what is a timeline? Now, if you're an experienced animator and you already know what a timeline is, then this video is probably not for you. But if you're brand new to this, and you look at that timeline and you don't understand what's going on, then hopefully this will give you a foundation so that you can at least get started. And hopefully it will give you a way that you can understand what happens with keyframes, what keyframes are, and what iClone does between those keyframes. So let's get started. I have an empty project here with just a character linked into this fighter jet. As you can see, there's no animation. So now I'm going to go ahead and drag over the sky into the background. Then I'm going to go to the z-axis and I'm going to go to minus 10,000, bring that sky down so we can see more of the clouds, then increase the scale to 2000. Now this is personal preference here. Now I'm ready to select the jet. Make sure I'm on frame 1. I'm going to move the jet back. It's still where I can still grab the handle to move it. Then I'm going to go all the way over to the end frame. You can either hit the end frame or you can drag the slider across. Then I'm going to move the jet all the way over and off the screen. Now let's test our animation. And you'll see it's starting off a little slow because of the default curve. Now we don't have to worry about what a curve is right now. Let's just right click on that last keyframe. Go to transition and hit linear. I'm sorry that menu was off the screen. Now you can see it moves quite a bit smoother. To speed it up, you just decrease the distance between the last keyframe and the first keyframe. So distance between keyframes equals speed. Now we can just move it off if you want to completely off the screen as long as you're on the first frame. And there's your animation. Now let's talk a little about what happens here. The timeline is what controls this movement. You have that first and that last keyframe when you click on whatever item that you're animating. You move the second keyframe depending on how fast or slow you want it to go. So you have your first keyframe as the start, your second keyframe as the end, and iClone fills in the difference. It does everything in between, which in early animation was actually called that a tweener or an in-between. But this is the basics of how a timeline works. You can move a box across the screen, you can do just about anything like this. This is just, hopefully, to help you get a grasp on what happens between two frames. So here I've got a new project loaded with just the jet. There is no kind of, well, and also a character linked in, but there's no kind of animation. So first thing I'm going to do is go over into props, into 3D space, and I'm going to grab the dome prop. Then after it loads, I'm going to center it up. And then I'm going to come in here with this uh, bottom box down here selected. And I'm going to increase this to 2000. Now you're going to need to find you a sky image. You can find one on the internet if nothing else. And drag it over to the prop. Then I'm going to go over into water, still normal. And I'm going to take water number 8. And I'm going to bring it over and drop it in. Make a few changes on it. This is all discretionary. I am just going to drop it, uh, also going to make it flow the opposite direction at 270 degrees, and then we're going to change the wave size, things like that. Like I said, this is just discretionary. Now I'm going to move the sky down while I'm still at frame 1. Now we're ready to animate the moving sky. So at frame 1. I'm going to move the sky all the way over, but enough I can still grab the gizmo. Then I'm going to go all the way to the end frame. And I'm going to move the sky all the way the other direction. Now we've got everything moving in between the first frame and the second frame. But it's moving kind of slow. Starts off slow because of the curve. So we're going to right click on this keyframe at the end. And we're going to go into the curve and we're going to select linear instead of the default curve. 
now as you'll notice everything will be moving at the same speed so let me position this up just a little more at the first frame again and we're ready to duplicate so what we're going to do is grab the character select the character and the aircraft hold down alt you'll get this warning and it will mess with the linking so what we're going to do is move this over out of the way a little bit and then we'll need to go to each pilot each character and link them to the proper jet just make sure they're linked to the proper jet so we'll link that one to his jet then I'm going to select the other one and I'm going to link it to this jet now we shouldn't have any problem so now we're going to add a little more motion and we're not going to worry about curves or curve editors or anything like that we're just going to add a little up and down maybe a little back and forth motion as we go down the timeline now you notice I go down the timeline and I don't move the same jet again I jump to the other jet just so it'll be different and not both of them are moving on the same keyframe because every time you do this if you'll notice down there it is creating one of those diamonds one of those keyframes and so every time you move it you're going to create a keyframe so it knows where to go and all we're doing here is just adding just a, a little more movement just to keep them from flying in a completely straight line. Now keep in mind this is the only movement that the jets have. Till now they were stationary. Everything else was moving. So what you have seen is a timeline in its most basic form. Even though this just moved an object or objects across the screen, you can do a lot more with it. You could also have duplicated more objects and just link them or excuse me, linked them to one of the objects that was already animated. And then you could spread them out and put them in any formation you wanted. But again, this is just the very beginning, the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with the timeline. So I would encourage you to look at every timeline tutorial that you can about iClone and maybe learn about timelines in general. Anyway, I hope this helps.